welcome, my name is Megan, I love doing art and I'm here to share it with you and for once I've actually made a little outline of what I want to say so that it might be useful to you, some of the tips that I've learnt from doing these landscapes. I haven't done landscapes in ages, so here we go. This first place I'm drawing is Minard Castle. I took the reference on my most recent holiday when we went to Dingle, it was so beautiful. And we couldn't actually go up to the castle on the day that we went, but instead we walked along the beach and therefore got this reference photo. I keep seeing people saying, put like do a wash, a, a particular colour underneath your whole painting before you get started. Haven't done it before, but I thought might as well try it. They keep saying it works, so I chose yellow. I'm not sure why. Maybe I thought the picture was very grey, but either way it did give it a nice glow but it wasn't drying fast enough for me. I watered it down an awful lot because I still wanted to have the texture of the canvas to work with. So I took some tissue paper to try to make it dry quicker and like flattened it down. And then when I lifted it up, little patches of the paint were gone because it was, all, it was only water and not all of it had like seeped into the canvas yet. But it looked like clouds. So uh, then I used those patterns that had ended up on the canvas to guide making clouds to sort of invent my own sky because the sky in the picture is really, really boring. I guess that's part of the beauty of art. You can boost saturation on things. You can take a memory that a photo of it makes it seem grey, but really it was a really happy time and capture that. And now this is hanging on our wall, reminding us every day of this lovely holiday we had. And having that yellow gave an effect that I've never had in a painting before where it looks like there is like because obviously I've got the whitest white where it looks like maybe it's a cloud or where the sun is coming through it's like the sun is trying to peek through and there's a little bit of yellow light dispersing through the sky so recently I've been developing this bad habit of sort of painting very haphazardly and it never turns out as well. My best landscapes are like done in a more measured way where I'm working from the back forward. It's just like, you know, good standard practice. Anyone would tell you that. So in this one, I made an effort to start with the sky and then the hills and then, you know, go forward. And when I first started using acrylic paint, I thought, yay, we can layer and layer and layer on like watercolor so I can just like slap stuff on and make it as thick as possible. But like, you can be more restrained. Acrylic paint doesn't have to be about loading the canvas with layers of paint just because you can. So like I made the, I used thicker paint on the hills and the castle, the things that have more form and solidity to them in real life. And then the beach and the ocean, I used more watered down paint and really taking advantage of the yellow wash that I already had. Which again, help with the colour unity. It's probably just because of the reference, but I really like the composition in this too. Everything's pulling the eyes towards the castle. It's like the sweep of the beach is an arrow going upwards. And then the castle's the most sort of delicate and detailed thing, so that really draws you to it as well. Of course, around here, we can't help but to use up the paint left on our palette. This is a picture. Yeah, so sometimes I take screenshots of people I'm on Zoom with. And this was one of those cases, and this is a few months ago, but it's just been, these pictures have just been sitting in my photo library, looking really beautiful, <laughs> and I uh, finally wanted to use them because she's really pretty, so. <laughs> and the first one didn't do it justice, but the second one was pretty, pretty happy with it. Uh, yeah, Baltimore, that was a cool time to wander around and to see that beacon and stuff. Um, we, w we went there on the way back from our previous holiday to the one from the painting that I just did. That makes sense. Um, I tried to do similar things with this painting as the previous one, but I could see yellow wasn't gonna work as a wash with this. So I used blue and it might seem like a little bit of a cop out, but it did give the whole thing an overall more, more naturalistic look. And I didn't need like as much help with making the clouds because the reference already had a lot to go on cloud wise. I just boosted the colours and the contrast to make it a bit more dramatic and try to make the most of the way the paint works anyway. I really like that bottom corner, the ocean there, how it sort of is much darker and thicker and then it goes off into just where I'm just working over the wash instead of laying down another base layer. Once I discovered that people don't actually paint in every detail a lot of the time, it was really cool and I like finding ways to cheat detail but make it look detailed. So. 
to get this uh, oh, texture at the end on everything in those far off distant hills and stuff, I took a paintbrush and dipped the tips of its bristles in some very watery paint and then just tapped it over everything to get these tiny little details. I think that I need to go back over the beacon at some point to make it more opaque. But overall, I'm very happy with it. I, I feel like this one, instead of drawing your eye to the beacon, it's drawing your eyes more out to sea. That's stuff I only think about more another, like later. So actually, during that painting, I was listening to Persuasion because I'm going to do it for the comparative for Leaving Cert. So whenever I look at that painting, like built into it are memories from listening to Persuasion and parts from the book. Do you ever get that? when you're doing art while listening to something. Thanks so much for watching, really appreciate it. Really hope you enjoyed or were able to get some tips that you could use in your landscape painting. Also, which which one was your favorite out of this video? Comment if you preferred the first one or the second. Minard Castle or Baltimore Beacon? Again, um, please consider subscribing and liking if you enjoyed it. Have a great week, goodbye.